Hi guys. Lord, what the difference a day makes. Uh, it is a lovely but windy, cold winter day, cold midwinter day here in central Florida. Now that we have arrived till into April, uh, we have gone from a hot midsummer day to a cold midwinter day as I'm sitting here in my two shirts my goose down vest, my Alaska parka, my sheepskin boots. Sancho has his little winter jacket on and it is still shivering. You know, <laughs> I, I try to see the humor in it, but at least the caterpillar invasion has been nipped in the bud for a couple of days. But it is Friday, April 2nd, 2021, so it is time for my ecological meltdown roundup rant, which is no joke <coughs> here on April 2nd. So on Friday, as I do every Friday, we're going to head over to mongabay.com and check in with uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls <coughs> at Manga Bay for the latest information about uh, how this planet is collapsing here during this weather whiplash and I'm gonna put this shivering little dog down to get back in his warm bed in Florida in April we're gonna start out I guess this is pretty much anywhere on the planet where there are forests but particularly the Amazon rainforest actually heard uh, NPR covering this story yesterday, doing an intelligent discussion on NPR. Oh, so Rhett wrote this one himself. You will be shocked to hear this guy's global forest loss increases in 2020. Yes, anybody who thought the uh, corona panic was going to uh, stop deforestation, well, the C word did not. <clears throat> The planet lost an area of tree cover larger than the United Kingdom in 2020, including more than 4.2 million hectares, which is a little over 10 million acres. 10 million acres of primary tropical forest, according to data released by the University of Maryland. Tree cover loss rose in both the tropics and temperate regions, but the rate of increase in loss was the greatest in primary tropical forest, led by rising deforestation and the incidence of fire in the Amazon, the Earth's largest rainforest. Destruction of primary tropical forest, the world's most biologically diverse ecosystems, released 2.64 billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere, an amount equivalent to the annual emissions, the annual emissions of 570 million cars. So if we took 570 million cars off of the planet for the next year, uh, it would uh, it would equal uh, the how much forest we lost in 2020 and that number will rise in 2021 more forests will be lost in 2021 than in 2020. Uh, this is not a doomsday prediction. It is a statement of obvious fact. Anyway, so I should just stop the, uh, the roundup right here, but let's plow on through. And of course, guys, I'm only, you know, have time to touch on probably half of the stories What's going on in East Africa to, to battle the locust plague? 
Good Lord. Take a wild guess how East Africa is battling a plague of locusts here in the collapse of civilization. East Africa deploys huge volumes of highly hazardous pesticides against locust plague. More than 95% of pesticides now being used in East Africa to fight locust swarms are scientifically proven to cause harm to humans and other organisms such as birds and fish. Yes, half of the anti-locust pesticides delivered in East Africa since the beginning of the infestation in late 2019 contain chlorpyrifos, a pesticide linked to brain damage in children and fetuses, which is banned in the European Union. <clears throat> Experts, including a former FAO official, I can't remember who that is, concede the pesticides being used, quote, are not pleasant things, but say the lack of safer alternatives and the intensity of the locust plague leave them with little choice. There you go. Then they look at, well, this is a story about the C word, so we're going to skip over the story of uh, <clears throat> mixed fates for captive elephants amid Thai tourism collapse. But you don't want to hear about that, I know. Okay, from Thailand to Cambodia asking the question, what other country would do this to its people as Cambodian land grab victims seek uh, international justice? What other country would do this to its people? Well, uh, you can start right here in this country, go through every country on the planet, and you would answer that question. <clears throat> the International Federation for Human Rights in 24 estimated that at least 770,000 people had been affected by land grabs that cover some 4 million hectares or 10 million acres of land. Yes, you will not believe that, but sources say indigenous communities are more adversely affected by land grabs because the land is often central to their animist beliefs and their livelihood. Do you think so? Uh, anyway, so this is just zeroing in on, uh, on Cambodia where they are trying to draft a definition of ecocide. I will have to come up uh, with a definition of ecocide. We can start with the airboat. We can start with the letter A. Airboat is the definition of ecocide. To be included on the list of international crimes that includes such other atrocities such as genocide and crimes against humanity. Yes, here we go. Their definition of ecocide is expected early this year and could mean that perpetrators of environmental destruction could be brought to international justice. Yes. Uh. <laughs> And so, uh, you would not believe this, uh, looking at mounting allegations of abuse within the system that has led critics to accuse the World Bank, unbelievable, accusing the World Bank of being complicit in land grabbing 
and the environmental damage it causes, no way that the World Bank, I actually remember, I'm embarrassed to say, a, a Terrence McKenna video when Terrence McKenna was talking about how the World Bank, uh, you know, were changing its ways and becoming environmental stewards. I wanted to reach through the uh, computer and slap Terrence McKenna. I mean, even Terrence McKenna uh, was swallowing the greenwashing of the World Bank. Uh, okay, let's go take a peek into Madagascar. You will not believe this, that businesses drive disappearance of wetlands. Who would have thought that businesses are driving the disappearance of wetlands in Madagascar? We're going to go over to Lake Aleotra. Lake Aleotra and its surrounding marshes are Madagascar's largest wetland. Huh and home to globally significant biodiversity. Despite layers, layers of legal protection and conservation programming around 850 hectares, otherwise known as 2,100 acres of marsh there, disappear every year to make way for rice cultivation, much of it perpetrated by businesses. Do you think so? Uh, <clears throat> the Madagascar government is implementing a zero tolerance campaign against illegal environmental destruction, but it remains to be seen whether this can in fact reduce the lawlessness and impunity enough to save the lake. Yes, the Madagascar government implementing a zero tolerance campaign against illegal environmental destruction. Oh, good lord. Uh, anyway, we're going to skip. Uh, as I say, I can't hit them all. Uh, here is more about the, uh, I talked a lot about this last week, the explosion of palm oil corporations moving into the Brazilian Amazon, uh, which might have something to do uh, with the opening story here this week. All right. So what has happened to that Chinese fishing fleet, which I guess was last out there in the Galapagos Islands? Chinese fishing fleet anchored on Philippine Reef raises tensions. Yes, more than 200 Chinese fishing vessels were spotted anchored at Whitsoon Reef, a disputed territory in the South China Sea sparking tensions in the Philippines, which lays claim to the area. Yes, the vessels have been there since December. Hmm. We have fears that the posturing may be a prelude to a type of island building China is known to conduct in the South China Sea. Uh, this is not the first time Chinese fishing vessels have triggered international consternation. Last year, a Chinese fishing fleet loitered at the border of the Galapagos Islands, yes. while another in Malaysian waters prompted the U.S. and Australia to send out their warships to the South China Sea. I think this is the first time we have seen the South China Sea showing up in Manga Bay. I have been saying for years that the South China Sea is my number one contender for the outbreak of World War III. Uh, 
All right, so right on the heels of uh, that excellent Netflix documentary, Sea Spiracy, uh, Manga Bay over there on its YouTube channel is talking about salmon farming, looking at whether salmon aqua farming is environmentally friendly. I will have to go check that out. But you could, towards the very end of Sea Spiracy, they gave you an excellent peek into how environmentally friendly salmon farming is. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, th this, this next one asking the question, can palm oil be grown sustainably is such an insult to my intelligence. You know, again, uh, every, you know, every week I have to say that, uh, you know, my, my one problem with Rhett, Rhett Butler has done more than any human on this planet to bring attention to palm oil, uh, the absolute joke uh, of sustainable palm oil. There is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. And here Rhett is running an article, uh, you, you know, just giving a bullhorn to these corporate uh, greenwashers talking about how they can grow palm oil sustainably. I, I you know, Rhett, come on, brother. Anyway, I'm not going to insult my intelligence or yours or embarrass Rhett Butler by uh, reading that bullshit. Let's go over uh, <clears throat> to Gabon. You will not believe this. We have a logging company moving into an intact rainforest in Gabon. This is a Chinese forest company. Wow, can you say Chinese Belt and Road Initiative? A Chinese forest company has built new roads in preparation to cut timber in a concession which includes a previous un previously unlogged forest in northeastern Gabon. Yes. Uh, villagers in the area are anxious for the Gabonese government to basically kick out a Chinese forestry company before it advances any further. Yes. I'm sure that's going to happen. All right. Good Lord, guys. I'm not even halfway through. All right. Let's go back to a uh, more information on global forest. Only six and a half percent of global forests are adequately protected. New study finds designating land as a protected area reduces Buzz, but does not stop deforestation, according to a recent study that found that designating an area, a protected area, meaning drawing a line around it on a map and painting it green, uh, reduces deforestation by 41% compared to areas that are not even declared protected areas. After adjusting for the effectiveness of protected areas, the study found that only 6.5% of forests on this planet today are adequately protected. Yes. Um, Africa, Europe, Europe coming in 
second, Africa, Europe, and South America have the highest rates of forest loss within their protected areas. Um, but China had the lowest percentage of truly protected lands on the planet. Do you think so? All right, we have another study sounding the latest warning of rainforest turning into savanna as climate warms. I, I don't know. I guess this is not the same one uh, as we were talking about last year. Uh, this is the newest study from Brazil shows that heat stress is disrupting a critical component of photosynthesis in tree species found in both the Amazon and the Cerrado. Um, tree area has, the, the area has become hotter in recent decades and faced increasingly intense heat waves fueled both by global warming and deforestation. Tropical forest could look more and more like deciduous forest or savannas in the future. Do you think so? Uh, let's zero in on, I'm calling it Burma, this Myanmar. Even on, uh, I was hearing someone being interviewed, talking, even they called it Burma. Deforestation surge threatens endangered species in Burma. This is the Tana Theral region, boasts remote, unique forests that provide vital habitat for endangered species found nowhere else in the world. But... Deforestation is mounting in the region with satellite data showing a surge in tree cover loss so far in 2021. Yes, as plantation expansion, talking mainly oil palm plantation expansion and small farms have been increasingly eating into native forest. Yes. Anyway, uh, okay, we have a new study on the plan, the nine boundaries, the planetary boundaries, uh, the nine boundaries humanity must respect to keep the planet habitable all life on earth and human civilization are sustained by vital biogeochemical systems which are in delicate balance. However, our species do largely to rapid population growth and explosive consumption is destabilizing the, these earth processes endangering the stability of the, quote, safe operating space for humanity. Yes, scientists have noted nine planetary boundaries beyond which we cannot push Earth systems without putting our societies at risk. Okay, here they are, guys. Climate change, one of the nine. Biodiversity loss ocean acidification, ozone depletion, atmospheric aerosol pollution, fresh water use, uh, biogeochemical flows of nitrogen and phosphorus, land system change, and release of novel chemicals. Human Humanity is already existing outside the safe operating space of at least four of these nine boundaries. That would be the four we are already overshooting uh, are climate change, biodiversity, 
land system change and the nitrogen and phosphorus imbalance. All right, we now have African swine fever ripping through parts of Indonesia. Uh, guys, I just have to. I'm, uh, I'm just going to zip on through the headlines. Uh, surge in seizures of giant clams has Philippine conservationists wary. <clears throat> the Bozo Nero <coughs> government wanted to, quote, run the cattle through environmental protections. It was a stampede. Yes. Um, this is talking about how Jair Bozo Nero accelerated its agenda of environmental deregulation during the Corona panic. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we talked about this last year, how the environment minister, Ricardo Salas, suggested, quote, running the cattle through environmental regulations while the rest of the country was focused on the corona panic. Yes, anyway. Uh, no one wants to hear about it. Um, anyway, Patagonia's blue whales besieged by hundreds of boats. This is blue whales. Uh, are having to dodge hundreds of vessels daily, most of them serving the area's salmon farms. Another indication of how environmentally sensitive salmon farming is. Uh, marine traffic in the area of all these sam salmon farms is so intense that scientists have described it as a neural network of connections between the farms. Uh, the various impacts of salmon farming on blue whales range from collisions, which can result in the death of whales, to noise pollutions that prevents whales from feeding. Uh, so anybody enjoying your farmed salmon, salmon, uh, here they're asking the question, can slow food, can slow food save Brazil's fast vanishing Cerrado? I think we all know the answer to that question, but guys, I realize I am talking to myself and all of this talk about farmed salmon has gotten me hungry for some farmed tilapia. So I'm gonna go uh, make me a big plate of farmed tilapia to warm up on this cold winter day in April. And if you uh, enjoyed getting depressed, uh, send uh, Rhett some love by thumbing up this video, please, and do feel free to subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you are over here and get out there and enjoy your farmed salmon and your blue whales while you still can. Bye, guys.